Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. So the big AI news from last week was the release of Gemini from Google. It's meant to be a competitor to GPT-4 from OpenAI. Comes in three different sizes. There's a nano one, the smallest one, which is gonna make its way to Pixel phones and it's already hit the Pixel 8 Pro with some limited functionality. Then there is the Pro version, Gemini Pro, that is now powering Bard. And then there is Gemini Ultra and that's the one that's gonna be available to Google's enterprise customers for their cloud offerings. In this video we're going to be using Gemini Pro and the idea is to find out is Gemini Pro that's now being used by Bard, is it better than GPT-4, worse than GPT-4, are they roughly both the same? Well if you want to find out more please let me explain. Okay, so basically I have a series of questions, a series of tests, including performance, speed, uh, logic, programming, debugging, and so on, that I ask questions to both GPT-4 via ChatGPT, I have a plus subscription there, so I have access to that, and to Bard, and therefore to Gemini Pro, and we look at the answers, who gets it right, who gets it wrong, who does it better, so we can have a comparison to see which is better. Is it GPT-4 or is it Gemini Pro? Okay, let's get cracking. Okay then, Gemini versus GPT-4. Can Google steal OpenAI's crown? And so, we've got a different set of tests. Here are the different categories I've created. Speed, logical deduction, colors, movies, sports, programming, bug hunting, and then availability and conclusion at the end. It's like a game show, it's like a TV game show. So, what's your first question gonna be for 50 points? So, the first thing we'll do is look at the speed. So, I gave both uh, ChatGPT and Bard the following, write, rewrite the following text in the third person, improve the readability and flow, remove any hype, superlatives and marketing hype. And then I had the blog post uh, text after that. And the input length, including the prompt, is just under 400 words. So, ChatGPT4 took 24.5 seconds and it produced an output of 359 words. So that was 14 words per second. How did Bard do? Bard took 8.1 seconds, only produced 292 words, but that was still 36 words per second. So, uh, you know, more than double the speed really Bard is compared to uh, ChatGPT. Obviously there are lots of unknowns like uh, the kind of load at the other end. So I did perform these tests several times and here's another test. Write a blog post about the merits of USB 4 compared to USB 3.2 Gen 1. ChatGPT, 45 seconds for a 533 word blog post, 12 words per second, similar to what it was doing previously. Bard, 12.8 seconds for 405 words, 31 words per second. So. All overall, Bard is much, much faster. Gemini is much, much faster than GPT-4. Okay, so now we're going to do some logic deduction. In a darts tournament, there was three players, Gary, David, and Eve. Eve finished above Gary. David finished below Gary, who finished last. I'll just give you a second to think about it yourself to get the answer. So, uh, this is what ChatGPT says. In the darts tournament, the final standing can be determined based on the information. Eve finished above Gary. David finished below Gary. From these statements, we can deduce that Eve did not finish last since she finished above Gary. David finished below Gary, which is Gary did not finish last. Therefore, David finished last, which is correct. Now, that is a good tick there for ChatGPT. What did Bard say? We can eliminate David first as he finished below Gary. Then since Eve finished above Gary, she must have finished first or second. Therefore, Gary must have finished last. No. So Bard got that completely wrong. However, in fairness, there was, Bard does give you three drafts available. And the second draft was correct. And it said we can analyze this step by step. E finished above Gary, David finished below Gary, therefore David finished last. So it did have the right thing in its second draft, but it wasn't what came up in the first one. Colors, on a shelf there is a red book, a purple mug, a green keychain, a cyan notepad, a white candle, and a silver photo frame. What color is the mug? Both of them got it right. The color of the mug on the shelf is purple, says ChatGPT. The mug is purple. The text states that there is a purple mug on the shelf, says Bard. So they both get it correct in that case. Movies. From the following list of five movies, which one is the most similar to Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope? The Princess Bride, Father of the Bride, Planes, Trains and Automobiles, 
Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, ChatGPT, Guardians of the Galaxy is the most similar. And then it gives us a whole reasoning there that is basically uh, quite right. And so it got that right. Bard, out of the five, the most similar to Star Wars is Guardians of the Galaxy. Why, genre, plot, and themes. Again, it gets that right. So both of them got that right there. So, so far, uh, they're doing pretty well. But we did have that misstep with Bard uh, on, the, on the logical deduction. So let's carry on. Sports, now this is going to be a football as in I'm not American, so soccer question. Is the following sentence plausible? Gary Lineker was deemed offside from his position on the substitute bench. And just so you know, in uh, football, uh, it doesn't matter what the substitute's doing. Of course, they can't, they're not part of the game. They're sitting on the bench waiting. So they can't be offside. Even if you don't know what offside means, he can't be because he's not in the game. So ChatGPT, since Gary Lineker was deemed offside from his position on the substitute, is not plausible in the context of football soccer. The offside rule applies to players who are actively involved in the play. That's correct. A player who's on the offside position must be on the field, which is correct. And it goes on to say all the other reasons. So uh, ChatGPT got it right. However, Bard almost got it right. So it said, while technically possible, the sentence Gary Lineker was deemed offside is highly improbable and borders on nonsensical. So the offside rule applies to players on the field. Correct. Substitutes cannot be directly involved in the game. Correct. However, it keeps saying the sentence is implausible and unlikely. Well, the thing is, it's not technically possible. No, it's not. And it's not impossible. It's implausible or improbable. It's impossible. So, uh, you know, it, it got it right. It was working out the right idea that he can't be uh, on the substitute bench and be involved. But rather than being definitive about it, it was like, while technically possible, it could happen. It's highly improbable. Well, no, it's just not possible. So, Bard, unfortunately, we have to say it got it wrong. Now, just to give Bard another chance, the other two drafts were a bit better. Draft two said it would be impossible for a player to, on the bench to be deemed offside. But it also noted if the sentence is used humorously or satirically, it could be interpreted as a joke about Lineker's eagerness to get onto the field. So top marks there. And draft three, the sentence is not plausible as it describes an impossible situation according to the rules. So also true. So draft two and three again did better on Bard than the one that was that's presented, which is always draft one. Okay, so now after doing all that stuff, I thought let's do a bit of programming. A lot of you I know use uh, ChatGPT and uh, possibly Bard for programming. So I said this, write a Python script to perform the following. Ask the user their name. Find the two uh, SHA-256 value of their name. Find the MD5 hash of the SHA-256 value. Search the result of the MD5 hash and see if the letter A is in it and then print out true or false. So this is not kind of a program it was going to be able to just kind of cut and paste from some other forum post it's seen on Stack Overflow or something. You have to do it a kind of bit of work here. And so ChatGPT gets it right. But one thing to notice is ChatGPT tries to run it locally. So rather than giving me the script, it actually come up and said, I can't do that because I'm not allowed to ask you for user input in my execution environment here. So it says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume the user's name is Alex. And then it goes on to actually do all those things uh, in the code. And it says, you can replace the username Alex uh, with any name that you, that you want to. And the code it gave for that, assuming that Alex here is hard coded, the code that it gave here is correct and gives you the correct answer. Now, Bard gives a bit of a longer explanation, says it's what it's going to do, and it actually does give you a script uh, rather than trying to run it interactively. And the script, this time we can see here, look, it's actually asking for the name rather than hard coding it. And again, the stuff it does here is uh, basically correct. However, there is a small bug, and this is interesting because it's also to do with what I typed in. I said, look for the letter A. Now, Chat GPT looked for lowercase. It re reduced everything to lowercase to be doubly sure. Here, Bard searches for the capital letter A, which won't be found in the output from MD5 hash because all the letters in that are lowercase. So it always fails. If you change this A here to a lowercase or force a lowercase uh, conversion somewhere on the line, it would have worked. So there you go. Just to be aware, there was a slight bug in that. So then that got me thinking about bugs. So how can we see how well they do? So here is a piece of code. It's got a bug in it. And it's actually an overflow bug. Uh, I don't know whether you can spot it, uh, but let me just point it out here. Average is equal to float of num1 plus num2. Now, 
these numbers here at this moment when they're calculated, this result here, before it goes outside the brackets, can overflow. It can be bigger than what an integer can hold. Look, both their integers here. And in fact, I ran it several times and it actually gave me that example. So here are two very big numbers. And it says the average of those two numbers is minus. And then this big number here. So it, it's wrong, basically. So it's because of this overflow statement here. So I've asked both ChatGPT and Bard to fix it for me. So ChatGPT realizes the potential integer overflow when adding num1 and number 2 together. And the way it suggests you fix it is to convert num1 to a float, then add it to the float version of num2, and then the result goes into average, which is itself a float. And the point is here is that floats uh, can store bigger numbers than integers. So it worked out that if you're dealing with integers and you're going to work out this average, if you do everything as a float, then you're going to be okay. And that's true. That fixes the bug. There are other ways to fix it, uh, but that's the way it actually does it. So I did ask it for a follow-up. Is there a different way to fix it? And it says, yes, another way to do it is to divide each number by two individually and then add the results together, which of course you can do as well mathematically. It's also casting to float here uh, again because the average number here is float, but that's not the reason why the overflow is fixed. The overflow is fixed here because of the divide by two. But there you go. That was a follow-up and it got that right as well. Now I asked Bard the same thing and uh, it, kind of, I don't know, kind of right, but kind of wrong. The overflow bug is provided code occurs when the rand function in C generates values in the range of 0 to rand max, which is typically 32767. Adding such values can potentially overflow the range of int, which of course is just absolute nonsense. Um, so no, 32767 is not going to overflow uh, the, the, the int type, but at least it's it, it is looking at the the overflow of adding the two integers together because it does adding such two values together. Uh, and then what it does to fix is it, it just says, well, let's make um, num1 and num2 a long int or a long which uh, is, is longer. Traditionally, it was 32 bit, 64 bit, but that really does depend on when and what OS and what CPU. But basically, uh, that would work. And then it does then work because you've done that. So the code it's given will fix it. And the reason it works here is because RAND actually returns the value of an integer, not a long integer. There could be some issues here about casting. So it probably fixed it, but it wasn't really, the, the text here wasn't really the right text at all. So it is right technically, but it could have done better. So then it did suggest a second way in the same response. It wasn't about the second draft. In the second response, and it starts all this nonsense here about checking whether the number is uh, max, int max, and then if they later than, greater than, then you take away, because it could print an error. Yeah, just nonsense, basically, if, uh, you know, no. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> okay, so after all that, what can we see? Well, GPT-4 is only available if you pay for a plus subscription. So the availability is uh, slightly restricted in that sense because you have to part some cash to do that. Bard with Gemini is available in 170 countries at the moment as I'm making this video in the English language only. It's available for free. At the moment, it isn't available in the EU. I'm in the EU, and so I had to use a VPN to get access. And using the VPN, I was able to get access without any problem. So uh, what does that mean for a conclusion? Well, BARD is faster and free and very capable. GPT-4 is slower and costs money, but it's more capable overall than BARD. And so there you have it. So the big advantage of BARD is that it's free. You can just go to BARD and you get all that very capable large language model. And I would probably say it's probably better than GPT 3.5. But of course, if you've got the plus subscription, then really GPT 4 is still uh, the boss, still the king. However, of course, it does cost you money. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Love to hear what uh, experience you've had of both systems and which one serves your particular purpose better. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to this channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.